Sarah Downey Robinson grew up just outside of Denver, Colorado. She was the first of her family to graduate college, combining her love of teaching with a bachelor's in English, a passion for yoga, and finding connection with expert trainers and mentors. Ambition aside, Sarah blended her passions with her career by developing a yoga-based curriculum to empower underprivileged children in public schools, leading to the launch of her nonprofit, Rise Up Yoga. The name Rise Up was inspired by one of Sarah's favorite musicals, Hamilton, and Sarah's friends now describe her as nonstop, sharing traits of action and service with a prolific Alexander Hamilton. Her values of service are also reflected in her proudest accomplishment, raising a child who also seeks opportunities to serve and help others. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Changemakers on Yippie ki TV. Today we are thrilled to have Sarah Downey Robinson, the founder and executive director of Rise Up Yoga, a local nonprofit here in Denver. Welcome Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. You are very welcome, we're excited. So tell me about Rise Up Yoga, what's your mission? Well at Rise Up Yoga, our mission is to go into schools, public schools during their school day and work with low income schools teaching trauma informed yoga to kids that are in underserved communities and helping them build stress resilience so that they can succeed better in life. I absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. So fast forward five years, you are wildly successful in that mission. How does the world look different? In five years, dream would be, if we were wildly successful, to be in the entire Rocky Mountain region and moving out towards the other 50 states. Fantastic. Nationwide domination. Absolutely. I love it. Um, so how did you come up with the idea for Rise Up Yoga? Well, I came up with the idea for Rise Up Yoga because I saw that we had a lot of kids that were in vulnerable situations with the current state of our world. Um, kids that were in um, situations of low income, uh, food insecurity, housing insecurity, drug addiction, all kinds of different things that come with being um, maybe in cycles of poverty or whatever. Yeah. And I wanted to be able to make a difference in their lives and bring in mindfulness and yoga, breathing techniques, and then bring it in a way that was accessible and fun and that could really stick with them for the rest of their lives. Uh, ultimately, I was inspired to do this because I just saw the need within the community and was tired of being part of the rhetoric and instead wanted to be part of the action. Good for you. That's fantastic. Thanks. With all that great work that you're doing, do you have a specific example of maybe a program that's really been just uh, gang gangbusters results with some of those kids? Yeah, absolutely. We just wrapped up our pilot program uh, with a local Aurora public school in Aurora and I worked with kids from kindergarten to eighth grade which was amazing, and um, <laughs> that's quite can, a span. Yeah, a lot it's of a lot of different very... energy levels there, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it was walking into the classroom every day and responding to that energy in a positive way, and helping them learn to then in turn respond to the energy around them in a positive way. So we were able to bring in a program I developed. I developed the curriculum from scratch because I wanted to make sure that these kids could see themselves represented in the literature that I was bringing in and in the yoga postures that I was bringing in, being mindful of the different bodies, being mindful of the children that were wearing hijabs, making sure that we were respectful of cultures and differences and at the same time coming together as a community to build relationships and to build this like sense of of empowerment within our school community. And so we um, worked with mindfulness, we worked with breathing, and we just had a wonderful time. And the kids would love singing the yoga songs back to me because of course there's music involved. Oh, and, great. Yeah, all kinds of fun stuff, so. You are amazing. <laughs> that is comprehensive. So what are your short-term and long-term goals then at this point? Our short-term needs right now are we're going to have a huge yoga mat drive for gently used mats or new mats if that's in someone's budget. And then also for donations to make sure that we can fund the project from uh, our start date in August all the way through our end date in early June for the 2017-2018 school year. I want to learn more about that entrepreneurial journey for you. What was it like for you when you first started out with this idea? When I first started out with the idea, I was very naive. Of course, <laughs> as we all are, you know, it's one of the things that you're not going to take the risk and you're not going to make the leap unless you're completely ignorant as to what's out there mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, so it was, I just jumped right in head first and 
began establishing the business and came up with the logo and all that kind of fun stuff, the fun part of it. Yeah. And then I realized, oh my goodness, I have no idea how to actually file paperwork to become a legitimate 501c3 <laughs> and really hit a brick wall. Yeah. So when my, um, when my journey hit that huge bump, I knew I needed to seek help. Yeah. So what was that bump like? What kinds of solutions were you experiencing out there when you were trying to figure out how to get your 501c3? When you look at the IRS's website, it's so much more of a disheartening experience than an empowering one and um, really kind of just a kick in the throat for anybody who is an entrepreneur trying to get out there. And when you have, you know, a yoga and creative brain, you're trying to sort through all this really technical mumbo jumbo stuff yeah. to figure out which documents you need to put through and how you need to craft documents. And I wasn't finding what I needed, and that's how I ended up with uh, with Heroes Do, is okay. because I needed a solution that could help solve that huge problem of the paperwork problem, the paperwork problem, yeah, and get things moving for me in, a, in an efficient and an effective manner. Awesome. So, how did you find your BKA? Then? I just Google searched Google? you guys. Yeah, I have okay. a background in marketing, <laughs> and PR, and some SEO, and. Okay. You know, I really, I went through and I, I vetted the companies really well because I wanted to make sure that my money was going to be well spent. It was yeah. our personal savings. So yeah. I really wanted to make sure that the money was going to be used exactly how I needed it. Yeah. And the huge deciding factor for me was the, you know, acceptance guarantee. Yeah. Done. Did you have any hesitations before you started working with Yippie Kaye? You know, it's a really interesting point that you say that. Uh, my former employer had warned me about working with these online 501c3 approval sites. So I did have some hesitation, but when I began to research everything and I saw that it was a guaranteed 100% approval on my 501c3 forms and that it was going to work, there, that just took all the pressure off and I knew I was making the right choice. What was the, um I'm curious about the, the customer experience part. What was the process like for you to use Yippie platform and, and actually get your 501c3? It was so seamless, amazing. I cannot speak highly enough about it because I was really just in this hugely elevated state of anxiety and, mm -hmm. you know, working through my own coping mechanisms mm -hmm. to just get through it because at one point, you know, the customer service takes over and it's amazing and it's such a weight off your shoulders. But then it becomes the waiting game to get your acceptance letter from the IRS after you've jumped through all the hoops. And um, I was actually doing a really amazing um, trauma-informed yoga training program. And I came home from the final day of that and I had my acceptance letter there on my dining room <laughs> table. And it was just this, I just burst into tears. I was so thrilled because I knew that it was, it was just a really nice, you know, a serendipitous moment of purpose coming together with the logistics and how often does that happen, right? Yeah. If I had been bogged down trying to figure out the paperwork, we would have never been able to launch in, I started the process in late January. Okay. I was in a school in March. Again, if the paperwork had been hanging over my head, I wouldn't have had time to go out to the schools. What would you tell someone who's considering working with the Yippie platform? I would say do it. Um, just jump right in. If it's truly what your purpose is, you're not going to regret it. Yeah. There's no way you're going to regret it. You're going to have to put in the hard work, but Yippie Kaye is going to do the heavy lifting of the paperwork portion for you. So you can focus on your purpose. So you can focus on the stuff that you actually want to be delivering to the community and then seeing that social ROI. But it's the best investment I made for my nonprofit hands down. What's your biggest piece of advice for someone who's looking to launch a nonprofit? My biggest piece of advice is to just do it. Um, you have to, at some point or another, give it a shot. Yeah. And if, if the idea is one that truly speaks to you, and if the idea is one that you know is going to change lives in a positive way, then why would you keep it to yourself? Yeah. And I, I would just say you have to, you know, any ounce of courage you can find within yourself to stack it all in there and go on out and do it because really at the end of the day you're only going to regret the things that you don't do yeah yeah solid point i totally agree um so how do we find you 
okay. Well, <laughs> I'm usually around town. Um, just kidding. You guys can find me at um, HTTPS colon backslash backslash all that good stuff. <laughs> Rise dash up dash yoga dot com. And I'm also on Facebook at Rise Up Yoga Inc. Um, we do a lot of Facebook live videos awesome. so that the kids can tune in and get an opportunity when they're not with me during the school year to work on maybe some breathing techniques or um, I like to post our meditations so that caregivers or whomever is helping out with kiddos that particular day can maybe use one of the rainbow, um, rainbow meditation is what I'm sorry, can use one of the meditation techniques to sort of... Um, settle in for the night that's awesome and so it sounds yeah, like you've turned so. your Facebook channel into sort of like an online training program that's got bits and pieces of some of the things that you're using that are beneficial to it, everyone exactly what are some major objectives that you're working on right now that they might be able to be a part of uh, if, they, if they want to be a part of the tribe we have the potential with um, the 2017 2018 school year to serve up to 3,000 children so that is a huge impact that a donor can make okay. if they are just willing to kick in some funds or kick in some some yoga mats. And for everyone out there, please go support Sarah. Go to riseupyoga.com, go to her Facebook. There's some great free tools that you can use there as well. Thank you so much for coming. It was an absolute pleasure. Love what you do and thank you for doing it. Thank you for having me and it's my pleasure to do it. Awesome. And that's it for another issue of Yippie TV. Thanks everyone.